The full giveaway rules will be at the end of the video, so stick around because there are actually two prizes for two different winners, so if you want an extra chance to win, keep watching. When I started on this doll, she wasn't filmed because I was planning on hosting the giveaway on Instagram, but because of all of your recent support here on YouTube, with your views, shares, likes, and comments, I thought it wouldn't be fair to have it be exclusive to just Instagram. So that's why I mostly just have her face up recorded. Let's start the repaint. I took this phone footage of how I made her horns. They're going to have embedded eyes. I run and twist wire through the head and shape them arched backwards. I add bulk with hot glue and while it's still hot I sink in two beads to make the eyes. Then I add on two part epoxy clay in sections. I dropped her on her horns more times than I care to admit and they didn't get damaged at all so this stuff is really strong and she fell on the point of the horns too and was completely unscathed so very impressive. The armature wire inside also helps to make that sturdier. If using air dry clay, you would want to avoid wetting it because that will make it more brittle. You might also want to add glue over top in order to reinforce the clay as well. I smooth out the clay using my favorite sculpting tool, which is a gum stimulator. And as the epoxy cures more, I use a wet paint brush to smooth it out. Once cured, I use fine grit sandpaper to smooth it out even more. Then I wrap her hair to prepare for MSC and her face repaint. I left the area near the horns unrooted until her face is finished. This is where I started filming for this video. So as you can see, her horns are painted and the eyes are done using acrylics and I made a slit pupil. I have face markings already added and one eye shape drawn in, so now I'm sketching out the second eye. I'm using the pencil to check for symmetry. Once I'm happy with the shapes, I go in with a darker color to outline and for anyone who isn't sure, this is a spectra base that I'm working on. I'm giving her black scleras and filling that in. I outline the mouth in black as well, giving her a heart-shaped mouth. I make the corners higher than the corners on her molding. I'm filling in the rest of the lips in a bright red. Her color scheme is white, black, and red, and I think that combination of colors is very striking. I really like how red pops against a white background, and the black brings in a darker value, which makes this a high contrast piece. We also have neutral colors, the white and black, with red being the non-neutral, and I think this works very nicely for her and makes her exciting to look at. I add a deep red to her inner corners and smudge it out with a stomp, which is a blending tool for getting into small areas. I go over the eye creases and blend them out. Mm -hmm. 
Using what is left on the stomp, I add shadows under her eyes. I also use it to carve out her nose and define it with shadows. Because Spectra's skin is white, I'm keeping this very soft and subtle. I use a Q-tip for extra blending. I'm using soft pastels to make the brows and then shape with an eraser. Because her face has yellowed slightly in comparison with her body, I am using a chalk pastel pencil to whiten it. After only a couple of layers, it looks really good and it matches her body a lot better now. With a very sharp pencil, I'm adding hair strokes. I want the eyes to almost look like moons and I want the color to read as silverish so I add in a black C shape and then blend it out. I go in with a light gray pencil, blend, and then add white. I'm using a fine tipped gel pen to add highlights around the eyes. Using a fine brush, I use diluted acrylic paints to add lines in the irises. I clean up around it with more black. For the slit pupils, I use a brush and acrylic paint, and then I drag it down to a finer point using a pin. I also tried adding white hair strokes on the brows, and I didn't think it added anything to it. In fact, I liked it better before, so I left them dark. Now I'm adding lashes using a black pencil. I want tears to be streaming down from the eyes on the horns, so I use a diluted acrylic back. I use a diluted acrylic black to make the streams. I couldn't find this footage, but as you can see, her cheeks have been blushed, and I used a very light application with a fluffy brush. I am glossing the lips and eyes, and the rest of her hair is rooted. For the hair, I'm making mini braids around her horns, and then I super glue them into place. I braid the side sections of her hair on both sides and put the rest in a ponytail at the base of the neck. I split the ponytail in half and make two braids, but I also leave out a strand so that I can weave them together.
I wrapped the smaller braids around the larger braid, covering up the ponytail elastic. I didn't like how bulky it ended up being at the ends, so I made another ponytail lower down and then I wrapped a small braid around that elastic. Then I did a single braid with the remaining hair. I secure it with another elastic and then glue a piece of lace over top. She felt not quite finished, so I decided to give her a long removable veil using this spiderweb lace. I fold over a small section and then gather it up as I'm sewing. I use a pin to attach it and then I secure the pin by gluing a piece of fabric to the underside and then I reinforce it by sewing along the added fabric. I also paint the pin head black to make it blend in. I'm using fray check because I don't want a hem on the veil and I'm only applying on the areas that would be prone to fraying and not the netting part. Using crystal drops I am making the tears in 3D using a pin to apply it. If you've seen my dark moon fairy repaint video you've seen me do this before and I love the effect that it gives. The veil is added and now she's done. I customized the base of her stand with a pentagram and I added her sigil to the middle of it. Her name is Lilith. Because Spectra's base has clear limbs, she looks incorporeal and ghost-like, obviously, since she's a ghost, so I wanted to keep that lightweight, airy feeling, so I kept the fabrics sheer. I wanted her to look weightless, almost like she could teleport or materialize out of thin air. I gave her some bows at the hips and a pentagram harness. I definitely will be showing how I created this on another doll in the future. It's just too cool not to make again. In the back she has two more bows. For the runner-up, the prize is this Littlest Pet Shop Spider that I repainted. It's so cute, I love it. I modified it by giving it a bigger abdomen and I added little spinnerets at the back and I also removed the bow that it came with. The first place winner will receive Lilith and her custom stand and the runner-up will get the spider. Now for the giveaway rules and how to enter. Number one, you need to be subscribed, so make sure if you haven't already to click on that red button that says subscribe down below. Also hit the notification bell while you're there so that you know when I upload a new video. Number two, leave a comment that says that you want to enter into the giveaway. Just one comment per account will be counted. You're welcome to leave multiple comments, it's just going to count as one entry. While you're writing your entry comment, I would love to know your thoughts on Lilith. Number three, you must be 18 years of age or older, or have the permission of a parent or legal guardian. And obviously, you'll need to be able to provide me with a valid mailing address. Number four, you must reply to my message letting you know that you won within 24 hours. 
if you don't get back to me in time, I will unfortunately have to pick a new winner. If the first place winner doesn't get back to me for whatever reason, the runner up will become winner number one. We can do winner's choice, but by default the number one prize is Lilith and the number two prize is the spider. For an extra entry and an extra chance to win, you can also enter into this giveaway on Instagram. There is a giveaway post there, it will be obvious and say giveaway on it. Follow the entry requirements there as well and that will give you two entries. The giveaway closes June 30th. I will be picking the winners randomly on the 30th, so be sure that you enter by June 29th at the latest and also keep an eye out for a message from me on the 30th. This is an international giveaway with free shipping. It's my way of saying thank you for all of your kind words and encouragement on my journey thus far. Good luck and I will see you in the next video!